everybody. That looks good on there? Yes. Yeah. I love that this just works every time that I I've know. been here this year. The perfect synchronicity. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, thank you again for inviting me, Jenny. You're welcome. And thank you all for bringing your enthusiasm. You guys have been like the most enthusiastic group I could tell from the singing. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I, I'm guessing Jenny explained a bit, a bit about this to you all. Um, and I just want to let the guides answer most of the questions, but if there's anything that you're just dying to know about this that you think would be better to ask to me, we'll have a minute or two for it. How does it work? How does it work? Mm -hmm. So it's like a telepathic communication of um, tuning into their, a frequency that um, anyone can tune into this frequency, and you will we'll all probably experience some of it during the session that you may feel like a heart opening or like, some presence of something else here, as many different guides come into the space whenever there is channeling. And um, through that kind of telepathic connection, I receive the information that then translates into words. So words are kind of like, they're a stepping stone for humans, as the, these beings, they don't use words in their reality, it's all kind of instantaneously, telepathically communicated from one being to another. Um, so this, my own subconscious translates that into language, into words that flow. And um, sometimes I'm receiving like images as well of the things that they're explaining. And um, when you're asking a question, you're also receiving that frequency. So their frequency just comes into the space and yeah, they visit us. <laughs> This happens in like real time, like that. But because how, how does the connection work? Like there is, you have a there's no latency or <laughs> there's no what latency or latency no, like the like delay. Let's know if it's delay. live. No, yeah, is it live or is there? Oh a yeah, delay? no, there's no delay. It's happening all here now. <laughs> yeah, but so they are like all over there. Yeah, yeah. well, that's the thing about. I mean, channeling in this multidimensional reality is that everything is here and now, and we are humans experiencing linear time, which is kind of an illusory perception. Um, in their dimension, there is no time. So they can go anywhere uh, throughout time. Like they can jump into the timelines of a lower density, but they are able to be, like they have a simultaneous experience. It's mm -hmm. a hard concept to grasp. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Are they able to alter timelines? You said they have no time. Uh, we're all altering timelines all the time. <laughs> yeah, that is true. Yeah. Yeah, they, so they are able to do that as well. Could you speak to who the Pleiadians are? And, and you may have done this if they didn't reject them to find out about it later, because I wasn't there, but who they are and like, if they're incarnated on Earth at all? Or? Uh, they are an extraterrestrial group, so there's many beings that we could define as Pleiadians, and the council that I channel, um, it's like one member of this council of many beings, and because they're collective in their consciousness, they're not, they don't see themselves as the singular being, they're more in touch with this kind of field and flow of everything, so they're receiving the information from every other member of their world all the time. Um, they, this is one form of the bigger group of Pleiadians, and they are really our, our ancestors in a way, as like a faction of different beings split off from the Pleiadians called the Anunnaki and created humanity. So they're deeply connected to us as we share the same genetics. Mm -hmm. And uh, people will have soul connections to different extraterrestrial groups some soul connections stronger than others. So just like people have past lives, you can receive information and energy from that other lifetime. You can receive information and energy from this extraterrestrial lifetime as well. And um, so they're not incarnate in the sense that like the Pleiadians are coming here into human bodies, though some people just come with a much stronger connection and remembrance to one of those lifetimes that they've had. Mm -hmm. So it can feel as if they are Pleiadian. <laughs> 
Do they have like names of them? No. Okay. No, no. It's um, because it's beyond language. Yeah, I was thinking. Um, they <laughs> they give to some channels like a name that represents that specific being because we still use language, but in their world, they're yeah. beyond that. Mm. They've given to me the sound Aneyi, um, and this is like connecting me and to to their frequency. Um, I don't really refer to it as their name because that's not how it works. Okay. But um, often when I'm like singing, that sound will come through. Okay. <coughs> how did you end up doing? How, how did you discover your? I was working with. Um, well, started with med plant medicines and discovering yoga and energy healing. Um, that was like the beginning of my path in 2011, 2012. And I met shaman in Guatemala that were my teachers. And they were both working with uh, entities, uh, angels, extraterrestrials in their own regard. And one of them that I worked with for a longer period of time was really a student of channeling. And he channels in his own way, though he's like staying conscious, he's keeping his personality here. And um, that kind of opened me up to this possibility. And um, I was leading a lot of cacao ceremonies and doing energy healing with the angels. Like I, I'm still to like opening up every like little box and uh, rabbit hole I can find. And during these processes, like I started to hear their voice in my head. And uh, eventually they just said to speak it out loud. And that was my first channeling experience and just um, experimenting with channeling for groups of friends uh, that were open to the idea. I kind of gained confidence in the connection over a period of like a year and it clarified as well. It's always clarifying itself as there's certain like blockages that are processed um, because the frequency is so high. So at first every time I would do it, it felt like it was like a workout of some sort. And <laughs> now it's just kind of like more natural, but yeah. And why did it come into with us, or why, why do they have interest in this? Mm, because they want to meet us in more pronounced ways. They uh, see the potentiality of our planet to ascend, uh, meaning like accessing a frequency that we can actually interact with the rest of the Galactic Alliance. Mm. So, I mean, that is one thing that they are wishing for. Um, though our planet got attention from extraterrestrials first in like the 40s when there was a nuclear war and this was something that you know could have threatened a lot of other timelines a lot of other dimensions as everything is like bleeding through dimensions so that really got their attention and um, since then the extraterrestrials have been a lot more focused in this world um, yeah Um, when this process happens, is there anything that we shouldn't do or can do to hinder that? Like, should we like sit as quietly as possible? Mm, just be your natural it? self. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Though I guess <coughs> one should or should not is um, they're not really going to answer questions about what's going to happen to me in the future. When will I get married? Da, 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 da. <laughs> but beyond that, personal questions are great. Are there religions based on the rating? No, I think it's counter to religion entirely because it's not about uh, believing or worshiping something. It's about being true to yourself. So I don't think you could use this information to form a religion. <laughs> um, do they have the ability to influence us? Like if I would ask them like for a personal favor, could they help out to do something, for example, or something like that? They could influence you. They could kind of steer you in the right direction. Yeah. And I mean, you know, with intention and, and focus and positive energy, like anything can come to you. So they can support you with that for sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. So um, you talked about the Galactic Alliance. So mm -hmm. does that mean that there's other beings similar to the Pleiadians in other areas of the galaxy? Yeah. Yeah, there's many different groups and they all, within this galaxy, they're aware of each other and I mean, there may be another galactic alliance within this galaxy. I don't really know that, but uh, they, through the galactic alliance, they kind of have an awareness of what's going on and they work together oftentimes. So, do you know of any, like, out of this, 
set of our gal galaxy. Do you have any connection with that as well? Or? Andromeda. Okay. Andromedans connect with this galaxy a lot because in the future, the galaxies are going to collide. So, I mean, because that's like a, an inescapable timeline in a way, um, they're already kind of interwoven with us. Though a lot of beings come from parallel universes entirely. So, um, you know, there's different versions of the Milky Way galaxy and some extraterrestrials don't come from this particular version of it. And a lot of extraterrestrials don't, like, they exist within the multiverse or parallel realities of this universe. Mm -hmm. So, they yeah, they can travel between mm -hmm. different yes. parallel realities. Cool. So, I mean, the structure of the universe is such that every, <laughs> everything that you could possibly imagine exists in some reality as, you know, the imagination, we've come to think, oh, the imagination makes things up. But um, there's so much out there. There's so many different universes and infinite versions of each universe. So whenever you imagine something, it's it's coming from somewhere. So it, it's not really imagination that goes into a different dimension? Yeah. Somewhere? No matter how beautiful or awful? Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> For the awful things, but oh, well. <laughs> Yeah. Are the Palladians here right now? I mean, I'm feeling this molded light just vibrating in my hand. They it's are here right now. Yeah. They definitely are here right now. <laughs> Subsided now. Okay. <laughs> it may come back. <laughs> the, well, so the thing about these beings is like they're always here and now with us. Uh, everything is here and now. This is one of the things that they talk about a lot. So any, it's not like, um, it's like you're kind of an antenna. And the frequency that you put out is what you receive. So as your own frequency raises, you open to those kinds of connections. And in meditation or in yoga or like walking in nature, any time that you're doing something that is like true to yourself, is passionate, um, you can open to that frequency and you can invite them in. Though there is a certain quantity of like, you probably all experience getting this far, that when you do something like a spiritual initiation or a healing or a course, um, that the energy of it begins before you even know you're doing it sometimes. It's like, because the, your trajectory is aligned with that outcome, the vibration of that is already starting to integrate. So with channeling, like oftentimes you'll feel some of it before or um, because it's all kind of organized through the synchronicity. A lot, of, some of the information that comes through may have been maybe something that you have been thinking about already, or something that has shown up in your life in some way in this past day or couple of days. Is it like deja vu? Kind of. Okay. Synchronicity. Synchronicity. <laughs> okay. We good to begin? Yes. 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 I'm actually going to start a separate video again, and um, yeah. Do you want to ask? Yeah. Yeah. So I also just have this idea that I should